Hi everybody, this is Krishna Vandanapu, a business applications MVP. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, we will learn how to implement auto scrolling or navigation gallery in Power Apps. We all implement gallery to show the text data in a tabular format, probably with additional filters to filter the data. But in today's video, I wanted you to enhance the usability of gallery by implementing image gallery with auto scrolling in various ways, horizontal, vertical and dissolving the image and the basic is without any navigation. Let us see how it is exactly works before we implement that in function. This is a power app I have implemented using canvas apps model and in this I have implemented the options of horizontal, vertical and also implemented how many seconds I can hold my image on the screen. Now whatever we see in the background is horizontal, now I am changing it to vertical. When the time I change the vertical, the navigation of the images modified to the vertical fashion. If I just change it to dissolve, it will change the behavior from vertical to dissolve. It is getting dissolved like the way how we see typical typical way of image gallery. If your user want to change the speed of the image dissolving, he can change that. Now I've changed from 7 to 4 and you can notice that the speed how it is dissolving the image, it is changing the image. Now if I don't want that any transition, I can always say that none and I can go back to the my standard way of manual transition. This is the output we are planning to implement as part of this video. I logged on to Power Apps Macro Portal. Before I implement, I want to update you a few things. I have taken my data source as SharePoint document library. It's not a picture library because if you see, I cannot add my picture library as part of my data source when I am trying to attach my data source. If you see here, I have created a picture library called images. If I come here and try to search for images, it won't even come because it is a limitation in Power Apps that I cannot connect to a picture library in Power Apps. So I cannot implement with the Power Apps connecting to image library. and. I know most of you have noticed that in SharePoint list, we got one new column called image column. If I create a column with that and I can come up to here, I can attach that list, but I cannot access that specific column where I have the image. If you see here, I have given that column name as event image. But if I try to resolve that column event image which is not coming up because still that column is not exposed to Power Apps. So I don't have any other way other than implementing with the document library. Before we know how we implemented with the document library, I want you to focus on few key properties we should know. I'm adding a new screen. In this screen, I am adding the image from my media library. I have added a slider. If you notice in the screen, I cannot move the image outside any of this screen width or height. But if I go to X and mention a value as 1366, the image went all the way outside the screen. This is exactly what I am doing when I am navigating the image from right to left which means that initially the image position will be outside the screen and I'm moving onto the screen. But how I'm moving onto the screen is I have added a slider here with the minimum value as zero and maximum value as 1366. Now, if I play around the image X position by subtracting the slider four dot value, It moves out and moves in depends on my slider position which means that I am changing, I am playing around my X quadrant of my image for horizontal transaction. Similarly, for vertical transaction, I am playing around my Y quadrant. I have added one more slider with the minimum value as zero 
and maximum value as 766 and this time I'm placing my y position to minus 766. So this went all the way outside my screen. Now if I just say this plus slider 5 dot value There you go. I got my image all the way onto my screen. This is the way I have handled my image vertical transition. But there is no way I can, if you see even in the advanced property, if I go and say dissolve, there is no dissolving property or hide also not there for an image. So how did I handle my dissolving behavior is using transparency. If you notice, there is a property called transparency and the transparency value 0 means visible and transparency 1 means hide which is nothing but transparency 0 means 0 transparency 1 means 100% transparency. If I can play around this transparency property I can achieve that dissolving behavior also. So let me add one more slider. I have set my transparency value as slider 6 dot value divided by 100. Because I want my transparency to be in a fractional value so that it will show my dissolving behavior. Let us see how it will work. Do you notice that image is slowly graying out and getting in, graying out and getting in. So which means that if I can play around my transparency property, I can achieve my dissolving behavior. These are the three properties of image I have used to achieve those three behaviors. However, I cannot dump all my images into my media gallery. So what I did is I have implemented using galleries. So if you notice here in my app, I have two galleries. One is a preload and the other one is gallery images. The preload, I have set the position of the preload gallery outside my screen because I want to use that as a container to hold all my next set of images to be shown on the screen. But this gallery is the key gallery where I am showing my images. Even here I have created one label sequence number, a hidden property to handle my next image sequence and this one is image transition which is the one where I am moving from right to left or top to bottom and next one is image transition which means the image which is moved onto the screen I am setting it to another image because if you notice there is no way we can hold the image on screen unless I maintain a dummy image as part of my gallery. So this image is to hold the image which is already transitioned and this is the one to transition my next image. How I am doing these transitions automatically is with the help of two timer controls. One timer control is to slide the image from right to left or left to right and the other one is to hold the image as long as user want to hold on the screen. So if you notice here the sliding image is the one has the property of duration 7000 which is 7 seconds and if you notice here I have a variable which is multiplying by 1000. If I see the value of the property for number of seconds user want to see the image on the screen is 7 seconds. That is the reason I see duration as 7000 which is nothing but 7 seconds. That 7 seconds is to navigate the image from right to left top to bottom or to dissolve. To understand a timer control how I have implemented we need to know five important properties of a timer control. Number one is auto start. Auto start is to ensure that the timer job starts automatically as soon as I play my app. If you notice that the timer got kick started automatically. And the next one is on timer start. As soon as the timer start what you want to perform timer end what you want to perform third property is that and fourth property is duration how long you want to run your timer control and last and important property is repeat do you want to repeat this timer job or not if you want to repeat you can mention that as true so it will continuously run if I pull down to 5000 and see that 
started automatically and it runs for 5 seconds and immediately it reset to 0 and repeatedly runs. That is what exactly we want because we want to repeat this timer job to run my images continuously with the set of images I have as part of my gallery. This is a image gallery I have taken. As part of the slider timer control, I have set the on timer end. Once that timer 7 seconds is completed, immediately I am first checking whether my image is the last image of my collection or not. Where is this collection coming from is on my screen on visible property, I am loading my document library into a collection to create a sequence number because this is the sequence number I am using to move my index to the next image on a timely basis. We all know that in Power Apps, a gallery can load 100 items at a time. If we see count rows of gallery 3 dot all items, it will show 100 items. Doesn't matter what is my row limit on the app. If I say row limit as 10, even then it will load 100 items. If I just remove and add it one more time and I add a label and say count rows. Even now it is loading 100. See whatever the app limit is, my gallery can load only 100. So when the next set of the items will get load is when the index move all the way to the end. As soon as the index go to the end of the gallery, it will load the next set of data into the gallery. This is the behavior of gallery. I have created one gallery as preloaded gallery. In this, I am providing my the data source as event pictures and for the default property of this gallery, I am validating if my index of the image running all the primary gallery is same as the number of items in my gallery, then move the index of this gallery to the last. If not, leave it where we are. So if it is the last item, it the index will go all the way to the last and it will load the next set of items in the gallery. That I am using as part of this timer on end and I am querying that gallery preload all items where ID is the last ID of this collection. So this one will get me the next set of 100 records and I am loading into a collection and I am creating the sequence number for each and every item. I know most of you might have thought why to create a gallery preload as part of the solution. If I don't create a gallery preload, if I want to get my next set of records onto my collection, all I have to do is I have to query against my data source. How do I query against my data source? Let me comment this and I have my formula ready. All I have to do is maybe if my where item id equal to last id sequence number then i have to filter against my data source where the id greater than my where item id remember the time i say this i get a delegation warning we cannot perform any operation against id because it is not a delegable field in sharepoint so what I have taken one gallery to load all my images beforehand and I'm querying against that gallery to avoid my delegation because it is always important to implement an app without having delegation issues rather than with delegations. I hope you got me why I am using one dummy or preloaded gallery as part of my solution. If it is not the last item, immediate what I'm doing is I'm updating my where item ID to the next item, which is nothing but I'm moving my index to the next image. Also, I'm ensuring that if it is horizontal, my next image position should be all the way rightmost side. If it is vertical, my Y position will be minus 639. Dissolve, 
I am not touching anything X or Y, but I am only changing my transparency values 0 and 1. Similarly, on change image, I need to have one more on timer and here is when I am moving the image positions. This is the image changes its position from right to left. If it is horizontal, I am checking image exposition until it is greater than 0. I am updating the exposition with minus 10. 10, 10 positions I am getting from right to left. If it is vertical, I am adding 10 so that the image will position from top to bottom 10 positions. If it is dissolved, I am just adding my fractional value with 0.02 percent. So this is how I am applying my image properties. When I just play the app, let me get the image ID to visible so that the index we will know what is the item number we are running on to. This is the third image and fourth image. Now I will pass the video recording until we move on to the 100th location. I went ahead and added a label to show what is the number of items in my primary gallery and preloaded gallery also. Now that the item ID is 99, once it comes to 100th element, 100th image, it will automatically load the next set of images into preload gallery and it will go to 200. Let's see in a moment. If you see here, it become 200 and my Primary gallery also became 200 and my index of the image is 102 now. 1 and 2. It goes on, goes on, goes. This is how we can achieve the gallery navigation without even having any delegation issues also. If you see here, I don't have any delegation issue as part of implementing this gallery navigation. It moving smooth without having any delegation warning. And it just dissolves. And also when I say none here, I get the basic standard behavior of image gallery. I shall be providing this app as part of my GitHub and also as part of Power Apps community. You can download from there and explore the entire logic in detail. If you have any questions, you can ask me as part of the comments. I can respond to you for all your questions. The development tip for today's video is in a gallery, I have an image and image on select has a functionality. For example, here I have written as notify action perform. But when I go on a play mode, there is no way user will know that it has a specific functionality associated with because it is not coming as a clickable image or a hand icon. To get that, how we could do is add a button on top of it. Mask that image with a button. And if you play that, you can see the hand icon. However, when you click on that, nothing will perform because we have not written the code on top of button click. The code is on image. How we could do that is on select of the button, we can select the image, which is image one. Now, if I play the app and click on that, I can see action perform. This way, I can give a interactive way of my controls on the gallery. So now, even on the standard image, I can show the user that this has a functionality behind it. So click on that. I hope this tip will be helpful to you while you are customizing your gallery. If you like this video, add your comments, hit like, subscribe to my YouTube channel for all future notifications. This is my contact information. I'm highly available on Twitter and LinkedIn. You can send your questions on Twitter or LinkedIn. I can respond to you as soon as I can. Thank you for your time.